Hello and welcome to JG3 Reviews. My name is James and I review fountain pens, ink, paper, share with you things from my collection and every now and then I get to share with you something from someone else's collection and that's what I'm doing today. A good friend of the channel has sent to me not one, not two, but three of his Conklin pens and they kind of represent uh, some changes going on at Conklin. They're all fairly modern. This is a vintage pen, uh, but only recent vintage, about 10, 12 years old. And then we have a couple of newer pens from the last several years. And they give us some interesting insight. And then I will also share with you a comparison to a Conklin that I have that came from just the last couple of years. We'll see how they've changed. We'll see how they write. And see if you find one of these on eBay or in a used pen form, if these are a good deal. All right, let's start with this newer stylograph. This is the box that any new Conklin has come in for quite a while. So it has a sleeve and a nice blue leatherette box with stitching. Nice for a presentation. And you have this matte Arctic blue fountain pen. And it's meant to reflect the style of the older stylographs. Now those pens go back to like the 1930s. So most of the design cues, they've, they've been around for a long time. And actually, you know, you see them across different pen companies lines as well uh, from all over the world at this point. But it is meant to can we use the word harken? Do we still say that in 2022? It harkens back to back in the day. Now, a phrase that you really shouldn't use unless you actually rode in a Model T while it was still a new car. But anyway, back in the day, Conklin made a lot of fountain pens along this style. And the old stylograph in this newer design, as it was supposed to be echoed in this not as new design, and yet is quite a bit different. We'll, we'll get to that. Anyway, first you have a very familiar Conklin clip and it does have where you can press it from the back. So it's got that little spring lever action clip. It has at the finial the Conklin name. That's kind of hard to see because it's very reflective with my lighting here. And then it has stylograph etched, probably laser etched, and the crescent moon, which is a typical Conklin design feature around that center band. And then you open up the pen. And I think what we find here, I'm actually not totally certain about this. Perhaps you could tell me in the comments, but I think this pen is probably old enough. It is pre Yovo nib. So this would be an in-house steel nib from Conklin. They used those up until just, I think it was a year or two ago. I'll put the date up here. And it has the two-tone uh, Conklin in gold and then Toledo and USA, because I did remember my reading glasses today. And then it has this uh, plastic grip with a metal band. Now, the only thing about the ergonomics of this pen, it's, it's nicely balanced. It does post, and it is a little bit back-weighted uh, because it is a fairly light pen. The back-weighting, to me, makes it more comfortable, right? unposted. But the only other thing about the ergonomics that jumps out at me is that it does have quite a step down here and you do feel it. Uh, I think the older pen is actually more comfortable to write with, but I find this to be comfortable enough. Anyway, when you open it back up, it is, as usual for Conklin, a cartridge converter and it does include the converter in the price, which we always give credit for around here. So that is that pen. It is a screw-on cap and it is one, two, just right, just a little bit before two. So we'll call that two, round it up, right? So that is a two twist cap and it does a good job. This is the older stylograph. It's also a pen that was meant to hearken back to those older Conklin pens. Now, the owner of this pen said he doesn't actually know exactly what year it was made in. He bought it used about a decade ago, and so that I have no idea. He also said he's had a very difficult time finding any information on this pen, asked me if I would search for some too, and I did, and I found as much butt as he did about this pen. If you know much about this pen, which when he bought it, it was said to be a Conklin Stylograph striated piston converter fountain pen. And so we've looked all of that up and just aren't finding much information. But it is a Stylograph and uh, it is an older pen. 
at least 10 years old, well, probably at least 10 to 20 years old, I would guess. So if you have any information, maybe you've got one of these and you can just flood us with information. I know that he would very much appreciate that. Let's look at the differences as we look at the style. So it is, first of all, a longer pen. And you will notice that the band is completely different. Where this is just laser etched, this is actually engraved on the metal band. And again, has the crescent moons and just a C rather than the stylograph name or Conklin. And big detail here. I know it keeps you up at night. You're wondering already. Conklin facing in the opposite direction. At some point, they decided to change that, you know, so this way, it, whether you're right-handed or left-handed, there is a pen for you. Uh, but it is also a lever spring clip, but this has the fulcrum closer to the center and is easier to work, and it's styled just a slight bit differently, see? But uh, I, li I like this one too. And let me just say, the owner of these pens said this is one of his favorite pens and is definitely his favorite out of the three Conklins that he sent me. And after writing with it, I can see why. And it has this curved finial with no logo or name or anything like that at the top, but I think it's nice looking. A little bit of trim there. And again, of course, it has, you know, your knob there at the end that doesn't do anything. It is a snap cap. Nice snick. You know that's a thing for me, right? So there you go. Now, even though it has what is visually similar when you come to the grip, this step down is less. You will notice that the grip, let me get this other pin, and of course that's a difference, twist versus snap cap. Uh, the step down is much less on the older pin, and the grip on this is the same diameter from here to here, whereas this one ramps up toward that step and makes it a little bit more comfortable just naturally. It does have the in-house Conklin nib as well. It's a steel. It is a fine, but the first owner of this pen that uh, our friend bought this from has done some nib tuning and a little bit of smoothing and grinding, and now it writes more like a fine to medium and both the owner of the pen and I agree on this, writes really well. This is a really nice writing nib. So whoever did the tuning, maybe you could, by some happy coincidence, be out there. You did a good job. It also is a converter pen. As I mentioned before, that was the way it was listed uh, when he bought it. So that included a converter as well. and also uses international standard cartridges. I like that snick. And it's just a, a nicely balanced pen. Like the other one, it does post very well. It is going to be a bit back heavy and a bit long, but writes well either way. All right, now we come to a newer Conklin pen. This is the Conklin Coronet, a pen that is at the uh, more affordable part of their offerings. And it's meant to be a broad appeal, everyday carry fountain pen. It may be an introduction to the Conklin line. It is a metal pen, and it is, I think, a pretty nice little everyday carry pen. It's There's nothing over the top about its styling or anything like that. It is just a normal everyday pen, but I think, you know, it, it's a good-looking pen. They have it in a few different colors. They have a snap cap that snaps well. Hear that? I'm not going to open it all the way because i got something to show you there in a second. And then it has this metal finial at the top of the cap and coronet painted on the uh, base of the cap. And then there's just a, a, well, there's a nothing. There's a nothing there, right? Okay, so what's hiding behind this cap? It is a metal section, like a chrome finished section, but I'm not going to be able to show you that chrome finished section because the owner doesn't like that kind of thing. And so what he's done is he has lightly sanded that finish and then applied white fingernail polish so that he would have more grip. And it does actually work. He likes it. He uses this pen, likes the pen. And uh, so when you open it, this is not the way it's going to look new. I'll put up a picture of what that grip section would normally look like. When you do, you will find uh, what he's done here to make that work. And while uh, you can like or dislike the look of that, I will say, if this is what you need to do to make the pen work, it works, okay? So the grip of this is not slippery at all. It gives you a good purchase. It's one of those DIY 
uh, solutions to a problem, then uh, maybe somebody out there will go, well, I never thought about that. Let me go try that right quick. And uh, and there you go. And of course, uh, depending on what you got around out there, I got two teenage daughters. I could have any color in the world. You could you could make that match the pen or complement the pen however you like to make the pen more usable for you. Now, the nib in this case is the OmniFlex nib, and I'll show you why that's special in the writing sample. It comes with a uh, plastic feed, and I found that I did not have problems with it keeping up ink-wise, but sometimes that's something that can be a little bit finicky with the OmniFlex, especially depending on if you have the older version or the Yovo version. You know, there's some difference in performance there, as I understand it. But uh, I found this to write well. Unscrew this, and like the other pens, it does come with a standard international cartridge, or excuse me, converter. It will use those cartridges as well. And so that, always getting credit, always getting credit. And that's the coronet. We'll look at that further in the writing sample. Another pen that I have here handy is my own Conklin Durograph. This was a limited edition with uh, Goulet pens, matte black and rose gold. And I think this is just a really good looking pen. And uh, I really enjoy writing with this. It has the newer Yovo nib blacked out. And that 1.1 stub, really, really nice writing stub nib. And it also, of course, includes the uh, converter, the screw-in converter. I really do like this pen. I enjoy it. And I will give you another writing sample of this, but I'm not going to go over it too much because you can watch the review listed below in the description after you're done with this video. All right, let's start with... the newer stylograph. Say stop nib. I don't know for sure. I think this is possibly pre-Yovo, but I don't know that for a fact. It is a medium nib. And all of the first three pens are going to be Namiki Black. Okay. I really like the way that this pen writes. It's writing very smoothly. This is Rhodia paper, but I've written on it with several kinds of paper and had no issue whatsoever. Wetness. As you can see in here, just a nice, smooth writing pen. It has a nice, crisp line. No issues there whatsoever. And I found that to be a pretty pleasant pen to write with. My only, my only bone to really pick would be that step down every now and then. I didn't really notice it just then. But uh, longer writing, that step down did sometimes just kind of, I won't say bugged me, but it, it wasn't exactly the way I would like it to be. So then we have the... Vintage, I think I almost said finish. It's not finish, it's American. Uh, but the vintage stylograph. And I'm going to put V for vintage over here, just so you remember. And this is a fine. And you'll say, there's no way that's fine. Look at it compared to that medium. But this has been tuned. So I'm going to put fine tuned to a medium. And again, that is in the Namiki Black. Let's do wetness test right here. And you can see it's putting down just a little bit more ink. I mean, that makes sense. It's writing a bit broader and uh, a little bit wetter, I think, as well. That skip was me. Now, one thing I've noticed, this has just a little bit more audible feedback, but it's not anything, it's not roughness, it's not uh, scratchy, not in the least, just a little bit of feedback, not even to the level of a good smooth pencil. So you'll hear it, but it does not, it's not negative. It's not a negative feedback at all. It, it does well. 
And so I like that. Actually, again, this is his favorite of these three of his pens, and one of his favorite pens, period. And uh, I can see why. It writes nicely, it's smooth, and uh, puts ink to paper really well. All right, now let's try the coronet. And this does again have that Omniflex nib. And the owner of this pen said that he doesn't have a lot of luck with this nib. And uh, I do find that it doesn't have quite as much flex. It's a bit stiffer than the FPR Jaipur that I have, which has quite a bit of flex. So I would, comparing this to that, I would prefer the Jaipur, but this isn't bad at all. Take that with a grain of salt. I am not an expert on flex nibs by any means, but uh, I'm not having too much trouble with it. Let's try a little bit of wetness. Huh. Do you have enough flow? I think I think maybe you do. Let's try a variation of lines. So this is just holding back and just almost no pressure. That's barely more than the weight of the pen. Light pressure, medium pressure, a good bit of pressure, and as much as I'm gonna put on somebody else's pen. So that gives you an idea of what you will and won't get out of that. really should be writing on a bigger line than this. See, so, yeah, I'm not very good at that. But that's okay. As I've said before, it is a pen channel. There are handwriting channels out there that do a much better job of that. I know they go hand in hand, but you know what I'm saying. Okay, so that's the coronet with the OmniFlex nib. Now let me show you, just as a way of reminder, what the uh, Duraflex is like. Very, very long, but this is a lighter material. So uh, keep that in mind. It's a lot lighter. And this is a... Uh, J. Urban ink. And it is a favorite of mine. The Eclatus F here. And so this, of course, you don't get any flex but you get a nice wide downstroke and thin side stroke and plenty of wetness there. Just a really nice pen as well. But again, I've done a full review of this one in the past, but I just thought I'd bring it back out because I really like it. And it also illustrates where Conklin is now. So this one, or these two pens are current. This is about 10 to 20 years ago. This is also current. And uh, you get a lot of variety from the Conklin brand. And of course, you get a lot of good nibs. Yovo nibs, I tend to enjoy. And that's what they come with now. If you go into vintage, you may be able, like he did, to find a really good one and a good candidate for tuning and smoothing. And that turned out to be a really nicely done nib. Thank you again to the subscriber who loaned these to me. Really enjoyed it, and it was neat to dive in. And if you have answers about this pen, I know that he would really appreciate it. Please share those in the comments below. What's your favorite Conklin pen? What do you like about them? And what nib of theirs do you prefer? All right, God bless you. Have a great week, and I'll see you in the next video.